everyone. Welcome. This is crazy online now. Uh, I haven't been uh, podcasting in a little, uh, quite a bit. Uh, so it's it's good to be back here and doing it a different way. Uh, new little series here, Cullen on Film. It's talking the filmmaker, artist, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and mostly for uh, Middletown North High School. So uh, I know we are live right now on the internet as well, but um, I'll have my students uh, log on so they can uh, listen and, and have a special guest to listen to in anything with doing with the arts. And of course, today we have Ming Chen. How are you, Ming? What's up, everybody? How you doing? It's good, so, it's good to be here. We usually we have you, and we came to visit you this year, but usually we have you in class, and obviously that's not going to happen now, right? So, uh, unfortunately, no, not for the, the foreseen future. And uh, yeah, Mr. Cullen here, you are, what's your official title? Uh, like TV film teacher, I guess. That's a pretty cool job. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I shouldn't be leading kids anywhere, but you know, if I had to teach a class, that would be the class that I would teach. Oh yeah, definitely. Or podcasting class would be you, right? <laughs> I, I'm working on it, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've had the distinct pleasure of coming to your class several times, and uh, for you know, two or three hours at a time, and teaching your kids about podcasting, and um, and then this year we switched it up where the kids came to the studio and yeah. were podcasting, and uh. Yeah, it uh, it looked like they had a lot of fun. So that was like the last day you were downstairs too. You guys moved up to the fifth floor now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we moved on up like the Jeffersons, man. <laughs> but we had it. That was a great time. They they all had a blast. So they'll they'll all be logging on and listening to this as well, which is great. Um, and uh, they love going back and uh, and watching and listening to that the podcasting that they did. So uh, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was great. Um, but anyway. We're here today. Um, usually we have you in and we, we get the kids the podcast and uh, beforehand you usually do a little uh, Q&A and talk about, you know, your background and stuff. And I have a, a lot of new freshman students in the arts program as well that they, they don't even know. They, some might know who you are, but they haven't got to meet you yet because you didn't come in. So this will be all new to them. Awesome. So, I, uh, yeah. Fire away. Ask anything you want. So, uh, well, since we'll, we'll focus on podcasting, if they don't know who you are, oh, well, all right. Uh, how did you get started in doing all this uh, podcasting and uh, um, creating a shared universe, which is what you have now, and it's growing? So I blame Kevin Smith. Uh, he started podcasting very, very early on in about 2007. He, uh, he found a format where he could express himself, where he could talk about whatever he wanted, and basically there were no rules. So I think... Kevin, even when he was making films, he was uh, there's always this kind of cloud over him of rules. Um, even when he was at Miramax, I remember once when he was shooting Dogma, his uh, his third movie, Dogma, he had wanted to do a thing where he wanted to post his dailies online, like on the same day they were shot, uh, because he wanted to give people a world, a look into like the his world of filmmaking. They really have that was, thing yet, did they? <laughs> Yeah, and he wanted to demystify it. And I'm like, dude, that's awesome, man. Like, no filmmaker out there would ever post his dailies on the same day he shot them. Yeah. How cool would that be? And then, uh, oddly enough, I think Harvey Weinstein called. <laughs> and he's like, dude, you, the, you, can't, you can't give away the movie before it comes out theatrically. What are you thinking? And he got, I think Harvey Weinstein yelled at him. <laughs> and he had to go back. He was like, well, Miramax said I couldn't post the dailies. That stinks, but I knew he really wanted to, and like, how revolutionary would that have been in film? Oh wow! Way back, you, back then, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so yeah. yeah. So I always thought, uh, you know, everything he did, you know, there was always rules, and um, I know at one point Kevin wanted to have his own radio show. So um, when he moved out to LA, uh, a station gave him two hours on a Saturday night so he could try it out. Oh yeah, and. Um, it was it was good. I think um, if you go back, if you Google it, you could probably listen to it. Really, he has it out there. Yeah, I think he was on, and he got our friend Brian Lynch uh, to co-host with him. It was very cool, but I think it was the same thing though. They're like, well, you can't curse. You got to break for commercials. Like there are all these rules. I could just see him doing commercials. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, well, all right, this isn't as fun as I thought it would be. But you know, a couple years later, podcasting rolled around. He was like, well, what what are the rules? And they're like the rules are there are no rules, oh. and um, I I remember uh, I remember posting his very first episode in 2007, and I remember listening to it, and you know he was cursing, and there, there's a lot of off color topics on there, and I was like, this is awesome, 
Yeah. This is wow. This is really cool. And of course, you know, once he started podcasting, a lot of people started listening to it because one, uh, he had an audience already. He was famous, but two, he's such a great storyteller, whether it be movies or, you know, just telling stories from his voice um, that I think podcasting was a perfect medium for him. Yeah, that's one oh. thing I showed the kids was like, or even excerpts of it where Kevin talks. Well, I think I did one at one point, tried to find a story that he told that didn't have so much cursing in it. <laughs> hard to do. It was good. It was good. I forget what it was. It was uh, when I first started, I think I had like little clips of, of like some partial stories that he told because uh, you know, they haven't seen him like on stage and how he does it. So um, those shows were great. I used to go to a lot of them. Yeah. So he really, really took to podcasting and, uh, you know, he gained a very large audience very quickly. And uh, he became he became one of the, you know, the top podcasters, along with, uh, I think, at the time, like Ricky Gervais was up there. I think Joe Rogan was uh, was getting there. Um, uh, um, Adam Carolla. Um, he was, you know, he was at the very he was at the top of a very short list of very well-known, very highly trafficked podcasters. And um so a couple years after he started that, um, I mean, you could tell he really fell in love with it. He was one of the few guys who uh, who uh, found a way to make money doing it by doing live shows, and he was selling adver some advertising. And at some point, he was like, you know what? I want to start a network. I want to start a podcast network. I need other shows that aren't just me. Um, at the time, I think he had that, and he had a couple other shows that were him and somebody else, but he wanted to start a network. So he got... Um, he got Walt and Brian and Brian Quinn to start a, uh, they had a podcast called tell them Steve Dave that went on the network. And, uh, he came to me one day. He's like, Hey, I want you to start a podcast. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? I out of the blue. He was just like, Hey, <laughs> yeah. Well, what had happened was that he, he, uh, he had a, he had a show and he went on vacation. So he wanted me and Mike to fill in for him. Oh. And we were like, we didn't really know what we were doing, yeah. but he was like, just, I'm going to town. I need you to fill in. And, uh, and we did, and we were pretty good. And he heard it. He was like, you guys should continue podcasting and I want you guys to podcast about comic books. He had heard of uh, this long segment we did on comics. He's like, I want you to keep doing that and do it as a podcast. I'm like, that first time was fun, but nobody cares about me. Like they care about you. You're famous already. You're awesome. And uh, you know, you of course you, your podcast would take off. I was a guy who uploaded his podcast on the internet. I was the it guy. And uh, you know, that's what he hired me for. I was yeah. like, I don't want to. I, 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 don't, I didn't want to talk into a microphone. Um, I didn't want to start a podcast. I, I was like, I have no business doing this. I'll support you though. He's like, no, no, no. I need, I need you to start a podcast for this network. Uh, you know, don't worry. You're gonna, it's gonna be awesome, and people are gonna listen to you. I'm like, well, what am I gonna podcast about? And he's like, well, what do you, what do you like? What do you want to, what would you podcast about? And uh, I, I don't know. I would do like comic books, Star Wars, and food. I guess. He's like, great. That's a podcast. That is, and no, it, I, that was a was that the start of I sell comics. That was the start of I sell comics. Yeah, I, but I was like, that's not a podcast. That's that's just a couple of guys talking about comic books, uh, Star Wars, and food. He's like, you don't get it. That number one, that is a podcast, and number two, you're gonna your your audience is gonna be everybody else that loves comic books, Star Wars, and food. <laughs> I'm like, really. I'm like, all right. So me, that's what I, me and Mike sat down behind the uh, beat up poker table in the back of the comic book shop. We uh, we fired up some mics, um, some microphones. Mike Zapsic got fired up, and uh, yeah, we started talking about comic books. We talked about some Star Wars. Mike used to be a chef, and I love to eat, so we talked about food. And uh, yeah, we were off and running from there because I, I remember I was like, how I was like, Kevin, man, how long do you want us to go for? He was like, can you do like an hour? Like, yeah, I could probably talk an hour about Star Wars comic books and food. And I remember that ep that one ep that first episode, I think we went almost two hours without even knowing it because um, I didn't even look at my phone. I didn't even look at my watch. Like time just flew by so quick because we were having so much fun. You don't realize how fast it goes. We, uh, it happened to us all a lot of times. Yeah. yeah and I, short stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, that was really fun. And I remember the thing that struck me as I went back and I listened to it just to see if we were decent or not. And I was like, wow, this actually sounds pretty good. Like we sounded like we went to broadcast school uh, because, you know, we flowed pretty well. Uh, at that point, I'd known Mike for about 10 years. So, you know, we had a pretty good, we had a pretty good dialogue going already just as friends. Um, but since we, you know, since we were so well-versed in comics and Star Wars and food, 
the conversation flowed pretty naturally. You know, we, we were never stuck at a point like, well, gee, what do you want to talk about now? You know, we never had a gap in the conversation. We sounded like a couple of DJs just riffing on, uh, on, on pop culture and, uh, and anything else that came to mind. And, um, and we were hooked instantly. I was like, man, that was really fun. Let's keep going. So, yeah, I, for now, keep track of that. Oh yeah. Yeah. For years after that, we were, we recorded pretty faithfully once a week. And, um, I think, uh, we just crossed our like 310th episode at this point. So, um, we, uh, I think in the last year or so we, we slowed down. We had, we kind of got off that once a week schedule, uh, cause we opened up our own podcast studio. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in uh, Eaton town, New Jersey. Yeah. And, uh, that was the only thing that kind of got us off our schedule. But uh, you were asking about how the studio got started. Yeah. Um, at some point, uh, I saw comics kind of took off. We got comic book men um, somehow found its way on the TV. Yeah. And um, so whenever we would go to a Comic-Con or when people would visit the store, they would they would come over to me and Mike like, hey, man, we really love the podcast. We're like, oh, yeah, that's cool, man. You listen to I saw comics or, you know, you listen to our podcast. They're like, yeah, it sounds like fun. Um, we want to do our own. How do we do it? I'm like, oh, well, and uh, I we would give him like a 10 minute lesson, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Huh. And uh, I was like, and, and you know, I would tell him kind of briefly what equipment to buy, how to upload it, where to upload it, things like that. But it was, I, you know, in the back of my head, I was always like, man, this really needs to be like a class, like a two hour class where we, you know, we give everybody everything. We teach everything, everybody what we've learned in the last 10 years. We teach that, and then we actually podcast, and that would be a legit class. Um, but I was like, well, wait, we don't have anywhere to do it. And, um, uh, you know, we, we'd always kind of joked around about opening up a studio or like a classroom or something like a podcast studio or a podcast classroom or, or like a space that would do both. And um, finally, after a couple of years, uh, yeah, we finally got off our butts and did it. And uh yeah, it was a total experiment, man. We didn't know if anybody would use it. We thought we didn't know if uh, it'd be too niche. We didn't know if anybody wanted to start podcasts besides us. Like we knew it was fun. Uh, we knew our friends were having fun doing it. We knew Kevin was having fun doing it, but would you know would wear her right off? Oh, she's yeah. Would anybody else? Uh, you know, would anybody else do it? And uh, I, I slowly but surely, I remember like. Uh, so at first, uh, you know, our friends would come in, then we get friends of friends. And then I remember the first day when we booked a client and it, we were like, holy crap, we don't know these people. We get like, this has to be we, like, we cleaned up the studio. Like we had to make it look professional. And uh, I remember they came in and they were a little nervous and, you know, I was there to guide them. And uh, by the end they're like, whoa, that was really fun. Like, can we come back next week? I was like, oh man, I think this is going to work. So um so that was uh we opened up officially uh, a little over two years ago and uh we've been going ever since yeah and then and you're expanding too you have that and um I, there's so many more podcasters in there now and now you uh, opened up asbury park as well yeah yeah yeah. we have a we have a studio right on the ocean front right, right on the ocean on the asbury park boardwalk and uh that um yeah, it, it was it was weird how that happened. I was just walking by a vacant uh, property, very nice, very new, and um, the uh, the the developers of the boardwalk uh, they had we'd been talking about starting a podcast for the city of Asbury Park and encouraging all the public events there and some of the business owners or uh, you know some of the people who run Asbury Park and uh, we were they're kind of taking me on a tour and I saw a vacant storefront and I was like, hey, what's going on here? Like, um, you know, that, uh, that's going to be empty until the summer. I'm like, Oh really? Huh? And then uh, I woke up the next morning. I was like, well, if no one's using it, maybe they would let us use it. Um, maybe for a reduced rate or something. And, uh, I, 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 in the back of my head, I was like, no, man, there's no way there's oceanfront property. This is highly desirable. But I'm like, you know what, what the hell? And I sent them an email and uh, I had a whole pitch written out about what I wanted to do. And uh, yeah, lo and behold, they're like, you know what? You uh, that's a, this is a great idea. Uh, yeah, if, if you, uh, let's talk about it. And uh, a week later, we were in there with another podcast studio. So uh, you know, for any kids listening out there, for anybody really, sometimes all you got to do is ask. It's yeah. very it's very weird. Um, but uh, yeah, at, there's so many times in life where you're like, ah, man, that'll never happen. I'm, I'm not even gonna bother asking. Always take the uh, right. Always if you. 
just go out there and try it, right? It's for yeah. Anyone. Yeah. Very recently, I've learned two things. One, if you don't ask the question, the answer is always no. Mm -hmm. And number two, uh, just be bold, man. Just, uh, you know, if it seems like a crazy idea, that's why it's going to work. You know, just ask. And, uh, you know, if, if they say no, big deal. Then, you know, you, you didn't lose anything. You yeah. were right where you started. But if they say yes... Yeah. Then you got some cool stuff happening. And I um, students, go ahead and try cuz uh, even with the celebrities I get sometimes they give them messages. Like I'll ask a lot of them and I'll get a couple, right? And I just do it. They're like, yeah, of course we'll do it. You know, you were there when uh, the girl from Walking Dead when I went up to her and she did a video. Yep. Quick and stuff like that and the kids love that. So um you just have to ask and, you know, if they say no, okay, bye. <laughs> if they say yeah, all right. Yeah, but I mean, I know what it feels like. Uh, you know, growing up, I was uh, I was pretty shy, and I, I never asked those questions, man. I was never bold. I was like, you know what? I'm just, you know, there's something I want to ask, or there's something I want to do, but you know, they're probably going to say no, and so I just I just kind of slunk back, and I didn't didn't do it. And then later on, I'd be like, man, I should have I should have asked. I should have you know I should have taken action. I should have been a little more bold, and. Um, I think we're all like that though when we're younger too. I do like I was the same way. I was shy, and then later on in life, I was like, oh, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'll just ask. Yeah, I know. I just I wish I could go back to uh you know my high school self and be like, you know what, just just do it, just just ask, just uh, whatever whatever you're thinking in the back of your head would be a cool idea. Just try it because uh because it is a cool idea. You never know. You never yeah. Know what happens, so. Um, yeah, so from, from that, what, what do you want to do with a shared universe from that point now? So you have Eatontown, you have Asbury. What are you looking And you have a lot of people that podcast, and now you're doing it online with a lot of people because we have to. Yeah. What, so, what are you yeah. looking forward to in the future with it? So I think the moment uh, that we started getting a lot of people coming in, and, uh, and, and, and it just wasn't the people coming in. It was kind of the diversity of topics that people wanted to podcast about. So – on one end, we had, uh, you know, small businesses. We had like real estate lawyers or, you know, people running real estate companies. And uh, we had them. We had a lot. We have a lot of people coming in, encouraging people in the health and fitness industry, which is pretty cool. On the other end of the spectrum, we uh, we have a podcast where it's just three guys that just go out and party. And then they come back and they talk about it every week on a podcast. And then we have, and then we have everything in between. So I think once I realized uh, that, not only I knew that podcasting was for everybody that you could talk about any topic you wanted. But once I realized that people would use that as a service and have fun doing it, I was like, Oh man, we gotta, you know, we gotta, we gotta get this to everybody. So the ultimate goal for a shared universe is to have uh, a shared universe podcast studio everywhere. Um, I would love it. I would love to see it in every major city. Um, and, you know, especially all the cities that I love and then I, I go to in my travels, uh, like Houston, you know, we both know Houston, Texas. It is an amazing town that could that could really use a podcast studio right now. Yeah. Uh, but cities like Chicago and Nashville and Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, you know, there's so much. I, you know, I could see this working in so many places, and um, I'm I'm hoping to make that happen in uh, in the near future. But uh, yeah, I I think if it can work, and you know, we're not in a big area, Eatontown, New Jersey, Asbury. These are small to mid-sized communities that and you know if you combine them they kind of make up one large area yeah. but uh you know imagine dropping a shared universe in the middle of like chicago or something i, I think uh you know i could i think we could be on to something there yeah or even new york city oh man yeah if only the rents were so i yeah. weren't so high so um yeah so I'm, I'm i'm working on it you know like any small business uh you know you, you gotta you gotta recoup your initial investments and then put that money towards something bigger. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's where we're heading toward right now. Well, hopefully all this will end soon and we can go back into the studios and do that. But this is on, in the meantime, this is great. So we're going to have some more shows uh, live here on the internet, which is, is going to be a, a cool thing while we have not much else things to do. Right. I mean, you've been doing this a lot now. Yeah, I have uh, for me, it's keeping me sane for sure. And it's keeping me connected to all, all the people that, um, you know, either we're coming in the studio or I'm seeing a lot of friends who I haven't seen in a while. Yeah. Uh, just people I've run into in my travels and, uh, you know, we're, we're figuring out or I'm helping them get hooked up uh, via live streaming or video conferencing. And uh, yeah, I mean, tech technology, whether you love it or hate it, 
in times like this, in times of crisis, it actually works out pretty well. So, um, you know, I've been having a one-to-one video chats with people. Yeah. And uh, the other night I was on a, on a, on a video conference with like 20 other people <laughs> who I hadn't seen in a year from the convention world. And it was good. I think it was good for my soul. It was good for my sanity. And, um, I, I just think, uh, you know, especially now when we're all basically forced to be apart, um, you know, things like podcasting and technology is really bringing us closer together. I think that's pretty cool. It's actually also easier to get uh, celebrities now to send little messages. They're home. They got nothing else to do. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. They're not working on any productions. They're not traveling. Uh, yeah, they're uh, – <laughs> yeah, so I, I imagine uh, there's that app called Cameo. I imagine they're doing pretty well right now. Yeah, um, and uh, a lot of them that, like, if I sent out an email a long time ago, I'm like, hey, 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 can, I got your email and all that. Can, can you send a message? And then you haven't heard from them in, like, months and months and months. Figured, oh, I'll never hear from them, and then all of a sudden, they're starting to come in now. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going through their backlog. They're like, "Yes, I think so." Like, I might as well do it now, right? Who's this? So, uh, Collins. Like, ah, oh, I'll answer his email. Yeah, well, I'll see what he's up to. Maybe he'll talk back to me. So, yeah, I think. Um, so I got a couple coming in from for the students, and uh, um, I had a guy from Star Wars Rebels who he does a voice. He did a little intro. We uh, we just released our film festival online. So um, if you go to North TV Film Productions on YouTube and you click on, you can, uh, uh, on that YouTube, you can watch our, it's about an hour long, of a bunch of our films and a couple of celebrities pop in there. And uh, the, one of the celebrities uh, introduces our little Star Wars fan film. That's awesome. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I met the filmmaker behind the Star Wars fan film. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he was very enthusiastic. Uh, he had a lot of energy and I, I I could tell. I wish I could have been there the first day that he figured out how to make a lightsaber. Like that must have just been mind blowing. It's pretty cool. You got it. Uh, well, I think I showed you the clip anyway, or something. Yeah. But uh, we they never got the finish because of all you know they they had a lot of footage and they had to shoot like one or two more one maybe one more day. That's all they needed, and they were unable to do that because you know we're not in school right now, um, and they needed like the gym for a certain thing. But they got a lot done and. Um, I think he's editing more of it together, but we have a nice little intro part and it says to be continued at the end. Oh, that's awesome. But it's actually enough for a student film. It's like four, about four minutes long and it's just the intro. And so, uh, what, what was the YouTube channel called again? Uh, North TV film productions. Okay, cool. I, I'm definitely going to check that out. I'm, uh, I'm putting it in, a, in the, in the chat here too. We just released it yesterday, our online film festival, the North uh, Online Film Festival. And already we got over 100 views, which is great. That means people are watching. And you can also, right now, for the next few days, there's a link right below it. And you can actually write in the names of the best actor, best actress. And by the end of the week, I'm going to – it's all tallying up, too, on that sheet that I have. Yeah. We'll have the winners by, like, Friday. That's badass, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so – you know, it, it's it's amazing what you can do when you're home and not doing much, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you come up. Uh, yeah, just start your own awards festival for sure. Yeah, so uh, we put that together, and uh, that's really cool. And then, yeah, I, I love your setup. Um, you know, I, I when I was in high school many years ago, we had a TV. We, it was a TV radio class back then. They didn't do film, yeah. and they, you know, we had the little set and everything. But um, I think the technology wasn't where like a guy like me wanted it to be. Where I wanted, to, you know, I can make. A full-on production. I think I thought it was very rudimentary back uh, when I was going to high school in the early '90s. Oh, it was. Yeah, no? we, we had a we did have 16 millimeter film though, but it was really hard for us to get it. You know, we film with it, but then we, to get it developed, it would like they would send it out, and it would never come back. Oh man, I imagine it must be expensive <laughs> at this point too, because like I don't know who's processing 16 millimeter film at this point. But uh, I, I remember going into your classroom. You guys had a whole row of like high-end IMAX. You guys have like a whole Adobe suite. Um, these kids could legit, I mean, and they do legit make shorts and, uh, professionally quality shorts and film with motion graphics and, you know, high end editing. And, uh, I was like, I, 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 it's pretty cool that, you know, the future feature of filmmaking is, is being birthed and, um, in like high schools right now. Yeah. So, uh, that's, what's pretty much going on with us. Uh, we have, uh, actually Easter break or winter break or not winter break, spring break coming up in a couple of days. So we have five more days and they got quarterlies to do online right now. So I thought 
it'd be really cool to have um, you as a um, guest speaker since we can't have you in class. And now I could just, you know, take this video, put it up there and uh, they can watch it. Yeah, right on. That's cool. I mean, I'm always, I'm always here to help out uh, Middletown North anytime for sure. Yeah, so we'll have to maybe early next year when we start out, we'll have you in early next year with our new studio because they're gonna they're fixing it up a little bit. Oh man, yeah, I uh, I've heard rumors of uh, possibly a podcast studio in there at some point. Yeah, which, uh, that's on the list of things to do. So I would love to help out with for sure. <laughs> you never know; it could be a podcasting podcasting class in the future. That's that's my goal to have it there. So that's one of my goals to have at the school. I think uh, I I mean I think that's probably in the future where there will be a podcasting curriculum in all in all high schools. They do have them in the middle schools. They have like a little you know computer and a, and, and you can. So a couple, I think a couple of the middle schools have it. That's cool. I mean, I've always, uh, I, cause, uh, you know, inner students, mainly adults or, uh, you know, a couple some millennial podcasters. I mean, I, uh, although our age range goes from like 15 to like 70. So, yeah. you know, we run the whole gamut, uh, as far as podcasters go, but I've always encouraged, uh, more, more, um, you know, more kid podcasters or more teen podcasters, um, you know, cause you and I both know they have stuff to say and, uh, what better outlet than podcasting? Yeah. So, uh, I might, you know, as we do this and go along in the next uh, few weeks, I'm going to see if some of my students want to come on. So we're going to try to get that some of the filmmakers and they could talk about their films, um, as well as other filmmakers. And we're going to try to do hang on to your shorts, uh, podcast soon as well. Oh yeah. We're, uh, I think, I think that'd be a lot of fun for sure. And then we'll have more guests. I'll have some more guests people on uh and uh more cullen on film episodes so uh i just want to say uh, you know thanks for uh for being here with us and um i'm sure the kids will enjoy it and they'll uh listen into the podcast at a shared universe awesome thanks for having me i uh I, it's, a, it's a it's a huge honor always always mr cullen great thanks thanks we'll see you guys later